Well, let's get to the interest rate rise yesterday. It might not be the last for this year, and that is not news you want to hear. Inflation is still too high. Sticky, as it's described. Let's bring in uh, Chris Richardson from Rich Insights. He's an economist, our favourite here at Sky News. Good to see you, Chris. Let's talk about inflation. Why is it still so high after, what, 13 rate rises? Uh, yeah, and, and it is higher in Australia than a bunch of other places now. Um, to be fair, what happened was inflation started later here. Uh, so, for example, in the United States, uh, inflation went even higher there than it did here, but they've been fighting it for longer and, and it's further down than it is here. But as we stand today, uh, inflation in Australia higher than a bunch of uh, other places. Mm. And two other things. I mean, one is it's popping up in some new areas and staying sticky, as you note, uh, in a range of uh, areas that are worrying the Reserve Bank. And that war, the new war over uh, in the Middle East, uh, has the bank concerned as well. Yeah. Right. Sticky inflation, terrible term, but I don't know how else to describe it. And uh, neither do economists. So let's just go with it. Um, look, interesting that we're now in this situation. There's a political dimension to all of this. Um, but as an economist, does more need to be done now on the fiscal side than ever before? I think that would be a great idea, but it's also a complicated uh, idea. Uh, the government can and should uh, help those who are uh, feeling the pain the most at the moment, uh, but that would be putting extra money into an economy that already has an inflation problem. Uh, they also, at the same time, it's a walk and chew gum situation. They need to take enough money out of uh, the economy uh, to mean that overall government money going in is less than otherwise. For example, that's why the International Monetary Fund was talking about slowing down the infrastructure spend. Yeah, right. So, I mean, I don't know the conversations you've been having at the moment, but there is this growing kind of chatter about the RBA being such a blunt interest, interest instrument and, you know, it, it kind of... Um, is affecting people who've already pulled back on their spending. Um, they can't really pull back anymore because what they're spending on is absolutely essential items. When you look at the, the fiscal side of things, doesn't that have the ability to be a little bit more nuanced um, and perhaps, you know, um, try to impact spending where it hurts the poorest the least? Uh, absolutely. Um, and, and that as a combination uh, would make superb economic sense. Mm. Um, that in turn means it doesn't make great political sense because uh, walking and chewing gum, actually giving extra money to people who are hurting the most, but taking money away from uh, you know elsewhere in the economy to, to lower the overall inflationary impact of what the government is doing. Um, you know, when you give people money, they, they kind of expect that you don't get much polit political thanks. When you take money away, mm. they scream. Uh, and, and so uh, when I say governments should be uh, walking in, chewing gum at the same time, uh, that's that's great on the economics. It's rather more challenging on the politics. Yeah, absolutely. I've spoken to a couple of economists over the last couple of weeks who are now starting to say, look, migration has just been way too high. Yes, we need more skilled workers in the country, but the influx of around 500,000 over the last 12 months is what is really driving this inflation. New migrants come, they have to spend money on things like housing and essentials. What, what's your theory on that? Yeah, and, and, and to be clear, it makes sense for Australia uh, to get a bunch of migrants. On a, uh, I remain a strong supporter of a strong migration program for mm. Australia. But uh, the sheer pace of uh, migration at the moment, added to the natural increase uh, in Australia's population, uh, means that overall population growth uh, in the past year uh, was probably close to two-thirds of a million people. Uh, and, and that is part of what's adding uh, to the pressure. Uh, it's, you know, all sorts of people said, oh, you get lots of migrants, you get lots of unemployment. That's not true. Um, but it does through things like housing, where it's really, really hard for us to get extra housing tomorrow. Uh, it does add to a bunch of price pressures in the near term. OK, so um, Christmas, how's that looking? A rate rise in December? 
Um, I'm hopeful not. And and remember, the Reserve Bank did soften its words just a little, uh, suggesting that maybe uh, you know it wasn't quite as sure around future rate rises as it was. You know, now that it's put an extra one, extra notch in the belt, extra swing of the uh, uh, the baseball bat, as it were. Uh, it's starting to hope that he doesn't need to do it again. That would be my hope too. Um, equally, however, you know, the, the the first thing the new Reserve Bank governor did was to refer to a, a situation that was shock after shock after shock. If we get something else going wrong, if, for example, Iran um, steps in uh, or more completely over in the Middle East, uh, sending energy prices uh, off and away and uh, again, it could um, sadly be a scenario we face. Yeah, Chris Richardson, thanks so much for that. We'll speak soon. Thanks, Laura.